Now in the Zelda games, we fight a lot of different enemies and groups of evil people. And a lot of the times, we barely know anything about them. They just show up, attack you for some reason, and you kill them because of that, and continue your quest. However, a lot of these enemies have a story. And one quite well-known group that falls into this category is the Twilight, who are certainly evil, but their story is a bit complex. It's not that black and white, but more an ugly grey. So today we will take a look at this group that almost destroyed Hyrule and Twilight Princess in order to find out why we want them dead. Now, let's dive right in. Now, like I said before, we saw this group in Twilight Princess, which is the 13th game in the Legend of Zelda series. And the goal of this game was simple, improving upon the concept seen in Ocarina of Time and being more mature. And because of that, it was highly anticipated by many members of the gaming community and was regarded as finally fulfilling a dream. And I bet that was also the reason for introducing the Twilight, because their origin story and actions in the game are quite dark, which fits with the more adult theme. Now in the game, the Twilight are descendants of a tribe of Hylian sorcerers from Hyrule, who are referred to as the Interlopers. And an incredibly long time ago, these Interlopers were condemned to the Twilight Realm by the Golden Goddesses of Hyrule as punishment. And that's because they actually tried to do something that would destroy the balance of the whole world. They used their powerful and dark magic to create a mask with near limitless power. And with this, they wanted to get the Triforce. Now in the end, they failed of course. And the mask they used became known as the Few Shadow, an instrument of dark power. However, during their failed attempt to conquer the Sacred Realm and get the Triforce, the Few Shadow was split into four pieces and scattered throughout the Twilight Realm in Hyrule. And anyone who came into contact with these pieces would be corrupted, turning into some sort of monster which we can see in Twilight Princess. Now in the end, the tribe lived and evolved in the Twilight Realm for centuries in isolation, mere shadows of what they once were, because over time they became accustomed to their surroundings and came to accept their fate. A lot of them learned to love the beautiful peace that could only be found in the Twilight, while others felt that they were being oppressed by the people of the Light World. Now in the end, the Twilight lost their most powerful abilities, but they still possess some magical power and teleportation is possible for the strongest Twilight. Now this is the whole story of this group. They were mighty mages that became too confident and hungry for power, and eventually lost everything because of this. And I bet a lot of people died when they were trying to achieve their goal. And that's why we wanted them dead back in the day. They wanted to destroy the balance of the world. Now, this wasn't anything new, because things usually became chaotic when people tried to obtain the Triforce. We already saw this before the events of A Link to the Past. This event was known as the Imprisoning War. During this time, the people of Hyrule found out about the Sacred Realm and the Triforce within, and so everyone went looking for it. And most didn't have very good intentions. And the same kind of happened here with the interlopers. So the reason why we wanted the interlopers dead was quite logical. They could have ruined everything to be honest. Now in the end we beat them and they now live in a dark realm where most of them were sort of happy. But some weren't at all. There were certain Twilight that absolutely hated what happened. Now the Twilight's leadership structure is built around the Twilight with the strongest magical abilities. And after centuries of rule, the Twilight Princess Midna became one of many rulers in a long line of royalty. And for a very long time, everything went incredibly well. The Hylians didn't bother the Twilight, and the Twilight didn't bother the Hylians. There was some sort of peace, and both sides knew of each other's existence. Well, when it comes to the royal families at least. But then, it all went wrong. And this was around the time of Midna becoming the ruler of the Twilight Realm. During this time, a rebel force grew within the Twilight, spearheaded by someone known as Sans. Now, he believed that he was the true heir to the throne, but the position was passed over, which made him incredibly angry. Now, the royal family had made this decision as Sans' ambitions reminded them of why their ancestors, the interlopers, got sealed away in the sacred realm in the first place. In their opinion, he was a threat, 
And that's because Zant was angry at the Hylians and the gods who had banished them to the Twilight Realm, and he actually wanted to change that. And so, because of those quite dark plans, he was denied a position of power, which made him very angry. And at that point, Ganondorf came into the picture. Now, he was also banished to the Twilight Realm, but he had a little plan. He would lend Zent his power to take over the Twilight Realm and Hyrule, which would obviously benefit Ganondorf as well. And interestingly enough, Zent accepted the offer. And so in the end, in a fit of rage, Zent used these powers to transform most of the inhabitants of the Twilight Realm into monsters and turned Midna into an imp-like creature. And so his dark dictatorship-like rule began. And Midna, during the events of Twilight Princess, tried to dethrone him. Now, in order to achieve his goal, Zant removed all the light from the realm and crafted most of the Twilight into a new race known as the Shadow Beasts, which are dark beings bent to his will. And so, together with the remaining monsters of Ganondorf's army, Zant opened a portal to Hyrule and began a conquest of the land. And after a series of successful campaigns, Zant's army assaulted Hyrule Castle directly, where he finally achieved the ultimate goal obtaining the throne of Hyrule. And so, in the end, he was able to completely take over the world. Well, almost. But he actually did achieve his goal. He conquered the world and became a dictator, filling the world with darkness and despair. And so because of that, we want him and the other Twilight dead. And Link is there to save the world from this dark force. He ends up collecting all the pieces of the few shadow, and together with Midna, takes the world back bit by bit. Bit. And in the end, you even take out Zant, so that things can finally go back to normal. That's why we want them dead. To restore the balance between the light and dark. However, at that point, you find out things aren't that simple. They aren't completely villains, to be honest. While Zant and the Twilight did kill hundreds or even thousands of Hylians and terrorized the lands for a very long time, a lot of it wasn't a choice, to be honest. While Zant certainly did all of this 100% on purpose, this can't be said about the Shadow Beast seen in the game. These Twilight have been corrupted by the Usurper King to do his bidding and so none of them do it out of free will, to be honest. So while we do want them dead for a good reason, the Shadow Beasts are actually innocent people, which Link discovers when he goes to the Twilight Realm and brings back the light. At that point, he can finally see that the Twilight are not completely evil, just like Midna, who wants to actually restore the balance of the world. So they aren't 100% evil, although I bet some do agree with Zant and his questionable plans of taking over the world. But what about Zant? Is he truly evil as well? Well, not completely, to be honest. Some of his ideas are sort of understandable, which actually makes him a very interesting villain, to be honest. Now, he has a pronounced hatred of Light Worlders, largely stemming from his ancestors being exiled to the Twilight Realm so long ago. And to an extent, that's understandable, because everyone who is found in the Twilight Realm was sent there by the Hyrulean royal family, using the Mirror of Twilight. Now, all of them did something wrong, of course, because they used it as a form of punishment, but in my opinion, the punishment was quite harsh. They are all doomed to live in darkness, after all, for their entire life. Zant even says he feels like an insect in a cage, so clearly he struggles a lot with the fate of his people. Still, his views are very extreme, and especially his solutions for this so-called problem are unacceptable. The amount of damage he does to the world of Hyrule, the Twilight Realm, and everyone living in those worlds is insane. At the end of the day, he totally deserves to die. What Link and Midna do is not unreasonable at all. You can even see that at the end of the game, he kind of goes insane. But that could also be because the extra power of Ganondorf is turning him mad. Or his influence does that. Now in the end, most of the Twilight didn't deserve to die. They were innocent after all and forced into doing all of this. And while insane, the motives of Zant are kind of understandable. Most of the Twilight don't deserve to be locked away forever. Especially because a lot of them have changed over time into overall good people. So at the end of the day, it's mostly Ganondorf's fault. He exploited the whole situation and maybe influenced Zant into becoming even more extreme. Luckily enough though, we do kill him in the end as well, and rightfully so. But hey, this isn't a video on Ganondorf. 
I will do that one sometime in the future. So to sum it all up, in the beginning we wanted the Twilight Dead because they were insane mages that were playing with dark magic. And in the end they created something purely evil. That alone is enough reason to take them out. But in the end they used this mighty artifact to obtain the Triforce all for themselves. And they were probably planning to use that to take over the world. Now in the end they were stopped and banished, but this wasn't enough because they returned at some point with Sant as their leader, and they managed to almost take over the entire world. But in the end, both the world of Hyrule and Twilight were saved, and peace was restored. And now we finally know why we wanted the Twilight dead. But before you leave, be sure to like, subscribe, and click the bell button. And one other thing you can do is suggest new topics for this series. Which group of enemies should I cover next? Be sure to let me know in the comments down below.